I um, want to start off by saying thank you to a whole bunch of people who were over here. It looked like a whole bunch of ants yesterday at work day. They're running and scurrying all over. Some of them are actually doing stuff. <laughs> they put paths in the middle of the desert, and some people made it so paths weren't noticed as much because they made, fixed them up and made them look nice and, and work right. Um, they, some, of, some people made plants look better. Some of them cut away the plants that didn't look so nice. Um, it was a great day, and so if you see something that's pretty, that, that looks better out there, anywhere, say thank you, right? If you know who they were, then you go say thank you to them. If you don't know who they were, you just say thank you to God for, for providing people who did that. I want to follow up with, with what Karen said. Karen did a great job. We've got a number of events coming up, and um, part of that is next week. Next week, I want you to all wear a t-shirt. It's that blue t-shirt that she was wearing. If you haven't got one yet, you can still order them at a table out there, right? And um, we'll try to get them all to people as soon as we can. If you have one, wear it next week, because next week is when we're really going to celebrate our, our reconciling, um, uh, what, what we've done in reconciling through the years. Also, I want you to um, come here with those t-shirts on um, for our pride service. That's on, the, that's on the 28th, and it will be right here. And this is the, the whole community-wide pride service, one strand, many colors. This is the first time we've been able to have it here at St. Francis because we have a big enough space now to have it. Um, isn't it great that there's that many people who want to celebrate pride, that we need to have a big space? So um, if you would like one of these posters to be able to put somewhere around your uh, around your world, come and get one. I've got a, a number of them sitting right there on my um, on my chair. Um, this week, there's a couple of things I want you to be aware of. Um, along with the, 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 the idea of pride, next Saturday night, we're going to be showing a movie called Carol. It's actually the movie that I'm going to talk about next Sunday. And so if you'd like to come in and watch that movie, it'll be Saturday night at 6. So come and watch that. There's also a movie tonight called The Evil Huntress. Come and watch that. In fact, if you want to, just come borrow a movie from my office and watch one every single night. But if you want to be with everyone else, it will be um, tonight and then Saturday night. Um, on, on Thursday, it is World Day of Prayer. And so at 10 o'clock in the morning, we will be here for a service. At 6.30 in the evening, we will be here for a service where we will bring in people from a number of different denominations and ideas and and spaces and come all together and say let's lift our hearts together in prayer. So if you'd like to be able to do any of that, thank you for um, coming to that. Our scripture today uses one, a line that comes in a whole bunch of different psalms. It says, sing a new song. Um, I love that line. There's so many ways that we need to sing new songs. But the hard part is, is, is a line that said um, a little bit later on. Let them, us, sing for joy on our couches. And you know how that's hard? Is singing for joy on your couches if you're sitting on the couch watching the U of A play last night? Because <laughs> they didn't win. Because how many know it's easier to win when you have victory? <laughs> how many know it's easier to find joy when that happens? It's, it's nice to be able to have it like that, and life doesn't always give us that, does it? My team as well lost by almost the same score. And I'm going, wait, how do I find joy right now? That's part of the, um, the challenge of life, because what comes along is not always perfect news. Not always the great news we want. For example, for about a week and a half, I've been trying to figure out what to do in my head about that nurse up in Utah that was arrested because she was following the law. What do you do with that? I've been trying to figure out what to do with that police officer who said, we only shoot black people. I've been trying to figure out what to do as storm after storm, Harvey, Irma, Jose, barrel towards the United States. Now, Jose, I'm just going to tell you that that's at least one Hispanic that you should worry about. <laughs> for those of all the rest. Our movie this week is about two people who face a very personal storm coming into their life. They get the news that they have cancer. And they have to figure out what to do next. And there's two men, Edward and Carter. Edward
towards the one on the far side and Carter on the near side. Um, and they have to say, what next? How do I act in the midst of this storm? What kind of hospital is this? There is a Virginia within a mile. Virginia, we have to talk. What did they say? Uh,
job-grasping Mexicans, terrorist Muslims, degenerate gays, and criminal blacks that makes people retreat in the bunkers of unreason and fear. We've sent out invitations for years, he said. We can't be surprised to see guests show up. You see, we've been sitting under this crippling thing that happened almost 20 years ago when two planes, on the day we celebrate or mourn tomorrow, flew into two, in, in two buildings. And we sit underneath that shroud of negativities and no's, and it cripples us. But those types of spaces, as challenging and as difficult, as dark and as diminishing as what they can be, are also an opportunity. Tony Campolo tells the story of a man who lost his job. And he went out and sat on a park bench because he didn't know what else to do. And while he was there, another man came up who also had tears in his eyes because he was the owner of a business and one of his greatest assets had died. The, it was a gorilla. He owned the zoo. He said, I don't know what to do. People are going to stop coming because this, this was one of our best attractions. And the first man looked at him and said, you know what? I, I think I have a solution. I, I need a job. You need a gorilla. <laughs> and so he dressed up in the suit and he acted really well and people began to come and see this fear invoking gorilla until one day a lion ended up in that same cage as the gorilla. And the gorilla wasn't having so much fun anymore. And so he yells out, help! And the lion looks at him and says, hey, you're not the only one out of a job. <laughs> Brian McLaren says, the bad news, the Christian faith in all its forms is in trouble. The good news, the Christian faith in all its form is pregnant with new possibilities. What can come out of this moment? Every scripture of whatever sort, every holy writing that I know of, whatever their ultimate conclusion speaks the same type of message. That in the midst of what you're facing right now, there is something more. That in death, there is the possibility of life. In the midst of defeat, there is the possibility of victory. There is hope when it seems futile. There is abundance and possibility in every moment. But you have to choose to see it. Are we keeping each other bound to narratives that encapsulate and imprison our souls? Or do we let go and set each other free? Arthur Christian Benson says, Very often a change of self is needed more than a change of scene. And that's what we have to do in the midst of whatever it is that, that seems to put barriers in our way is we have to free our souls. And that is what Edward does for Carter. What are you doing? What is this? Come on, give it back. What is it? Give it back. I would argue the 
the exact opposite. All right. What are you doing? A little rewrite, that's all. I mean, don't you want to go out and all these guns blazing? Have a little fun? It was not supposed to be about guns blazing or anything like that. Then what's the point? What the hell is witness something majestic? Have you ever been to the young ladies? Probably the Mustang show be not bad. <laughs> I know. All right. How about skydiving? Now we're on to something. Are you on to something? No. Let me see that. This is the most beautiful girl in the world. How do you propose doing that? Volume. <laughs> get a tattoo. Is that the sum of your ambition? That would have taken bath deeper than you. <laughs> it's easy to be deep in freshman philosophy. What's Dr. Holland say? We got months, right? A year, maybe. You think 45 years went by fast? We can do this. We should do this. We could do this. We should do this. In the midst of whatever it is that is saying no to you, in the midst of whatever it is that's the negativity surrounding you, the real situations that you face, you need to hear some voice that says, become, do, be something more than you are right now. Begin to write a bucket list. And there's good examples of what to do. This week, I just happened to, um, I set it down a little bit. I just happened to see a thing that came from the um, YWCA that just said, we stand together. A safe place for anyone. See, that's a bucket list and it's saying there's something more than whatever is facing that person who doesn't feel safe. John Wesley forever proclaimed things like, do all the good you can. What's that saying? Say something, do something, be something that, that proclaims something beyond right now. We could do this. We should do this. Every song we sing, it seems like, speaks this. Think about the songs we sang today. I hope you dance in the midst of whatever it is. Any boy that says, here it is, maybe death will happen, but my heart still calls out to you, still reaches towards you. You're still alive in me. Every bit of art, every movie calls out to us something of possibilities in the midst of whatever it is we're facing. They call us to open our hearts again to what might be, what can be, and instead, we're busy shouting like Edward did at the beginning of the movie, two beds to a room, two, two beds to a room, no exceptions. I run hospitals, not health spas. And every time we're so busy saying those kinds of things, we miss Carter when he says, you might want to check the pea soup. <laughs> or something else that somebody says. I loved the story about my grandfather that was read. That moment of Wu Wei, that moment of inaction, that moment of sitting and listening and hearing God speaking, not in order to gain the fish, which drives us so often, but just to be in that moment of letting God speak. Wu Wei is about letting something more speak into your heart into your life. And do you take the time to listen and follow that higher voice? Sometimes I find myself so immersed in worry for what might be lost, undone, unraveled, that I fail to understand and appreciate what is here right now in front of me. To live with an open heart, to live with a sense of awe doesn't mean we are blind to, to suffering, or pain or fear, only that we also live, that we also see the blessings all around us, the sacred gifts of life 
love, and beauty. God is present in the midst of all those negatives, those no's, those barriers, those things which seem to stop us. But we have to choose to see that presence and the very real way to be that presence for each other. Jack Palavich says, on the day I die, a lot will happen. A lot will change. The world will be busy. On the day I die, all the important appointments I made will be left unattended. The many plans I had yet to complete will remain forever undone. The calendar that ruled so many of my days will now be irrelevant to me. Yet, for as much as will happen on that day, one more thing will also happen. On the day I die, the few people who really know and truly love me will grieve deeply. They will feel a void. They will feel cheated. They will not feel ready. They will feel as though a part of them has died as well. And on that day, more than anything in the world, they will want more time with me. Don't let your life be stolen every day by all that you believe matters, because on the day you die, much of it simply won't. Yes, you and I will die one day, but before that day comes, let us live. Let us love. So they start off on their voyage and they end up discovering truth, love, joy, in of all places, Egypt. Do you know that the only dog ever struck by lightning was lightning in Egypt? <laughs> we shall have met you before we were dead. <laughs>
and I missed him. A bucket list is not some hed hedonistic search for whatever we want. It is a plunging into that which is most important, into the relationships of life which draw our hearts together and help us find the deepest things of life. Darren Hufford in his book, The Misunderstood God, says, love in our heart, the love in our hearts is what helps people find God. We don't have to embellish truth to get people interested in God. Love is the truth. This and only this is what God delights in. St. Francis, the namesake for what we are. One point went to a crumbling church known as San Damiano. Not look at that cross on the wall there and <coughs> fell prostrate in front of it and said, Lord Jesus, what do you want me to do? And after a while, a voice came back to him and said, go now and repair my church, which, as you see, is falling down. And he went out to begin finding stones to build that church together. But he knew, as we know, that it's not really about building stones and putting them together. It is about putting the stones of our hearts together. It's about tearing down those things which are standing in our way and placing stones of joy and love into each other's lives so that we discover what's truly important about this life. God isn't in heaven, continues Hufford. God isn't in heaven saying, why can't you be more like Jesus? Instead, God looks at us here and says, I'm so glad you're becoming more like you. That's the bucket list, is to become everything in the moment of the, that's there in front of you, everything that you can be in, in, in the face of a diagnosis you don't want, continuing to see light. In the midst of defeat, continuing to see victory. In the midst of whatever it is that stands in front of you, seeing possibility and announcing that possibility, that new adventure to the Edwards and Carters of your life. Carter dies in this movie. And he leaves a message for his friend Carter. Virginia said I left the strength and came back to husband. There's no way I can repay you for all you've done for me. So rather than try, I'm just going to ask you to do something else for me. Find the joy in your life. You once said you're not everyone. Well, that's true. You're certainly not everyone. But everyone is everyone. My pastor always says, our lives are streams flowing into the same river towards whatever heaven lies in the mist beyond the falls. Find the joy in your life, Edward. My dear friend, close your eyes. And let the boys take you home. Find the joy in your life. Share that joy with each other. Since I've been in high school, and my favorite saying says this Make no small dreams, they have no magic to stir our souls. Today I would say it this way. Make no small bucket list, because that has nothing that will change this world. Dream wonders, dream joy, dream love, bring that joy and love to each other, and bless this world. Amen? Amen. Let's stand and sing together.